Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine, coming to you with a weekly Common Sense MD podcast. Um, you'll notice that I've put my stethoscope around my neck today. That's to remind you that I am a real medical doctor, um, as opposed to one that plays one on TV. You know, I could play one on TV, and it'd probably be, be more real, but not as dramatic. But anyway, so that's my form of comedy. But uh, in any event... Um, I hope you find this podcast really interesting because, as you see, I'm kind of alert. I feel really good today. It's because I'm on hour 40 of a fast. That's what the topic of today's podcast is going to be on is fasting. So I decided uh, before I did this podcast, I would do a 40-hour fast. So the only thing I've consumed is water. Um, I had two cups of black coffee during this and one very small, maybe half cup of uh, bone broth, organic grass-fed um, bovine bone broth, uh, which I think helped a little bit. Now, the reason I did this is because not only I wanted to see how I would do with it, I've done 32-hour fast before, but never a 40-hour um, and what spurred me on was I wanted to do a podcast on it, but I also had a little bit of an upset stomach this past week, probably because I tweaked um, my shoulder and one of my knees playing pickleball. So I took some non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and I think that kind of upset my gut microbiome a little bit, just a little bit. But uh, so I decided it's a great time to, to do a fast. Now, I'm a proponent of intermittent fasting almost every day. As a matter of fact, I do it every day, except maybe once on the weekends, I'll eat a brunch maybe on a Sunday. Um, so I'm used to intermittent fasting. And for me, it's a 17 hour off, seven on or thereabouts protocol. And I, I've been doing that for gosh, maybe a couple of years now. And it's really helped me a lot. But, you know, the prolonged fasting, um, I don't do a whole lot. Sometimes I will. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you at the end of this podcast kind of how I feel right now, um, which is good. But in any event, um, so I do intermittent fasting on almost a daily basis. And I found that to be uh, that and a low-carb diet to be very effective tools for health, especially for people that need to lose weight, which is probably about 90% of the people that I see in my office. Um, so because I was having a little bit of gut discomfort, I put my bowel at rest. My father, who was a, a general surgeon, did a lot of uh, gut work, gut surgery. He always told me, if you have a stomach ache, put the bowel at rest. And I, I go, what do you mean? He goes, don't eat. And that almost always works, whether you have constipation, diarrhea, uh, gas, bloating, whatever, GERD, just don't eat. You'll survive, believe me. And, you know, you'll benefit by this. Um, so, and, and really, that's the way we evolved, really, as human beings. We weren't meant to graze all day. You know, that's really why that's really why we are in such bad health, I think, because we have refrigeration, we have processed foods. People are eating from the time they get up to the time they go to bed. It's no wonder when you look at our country, I mean, go to, a, go to any venue and in our country, and all you see is obese people who are hobbling around and you know, you can imagine what kind of medications they have to be on, and, and they're still, they look miserable. There's a segment of our population that really pays attention to it um, and is, is very healthy and feels great. But for the vast majority of Americans, they're very unhealthy, and it simply has to do with their eating patterns and their weight. I mean, it leads to all these new diseases of civilization like a metabolic syndrome, heart disease, cancer, dementia, um, almost every one of them you can mention, those things weren't even heard of, you know, 200 years ago. So 
We're not getting more healthy despite all our advances in medicine. We're getting less healthy. We're taking more medicines. We're becoming less healthy. Um, so anyway, um, so whether you do prolonged fasting for, um, you know, 24, 48 hours, or whether you do intermittent fasting, they're both very beneficial um, to your health. Fasting is very popular right now. Um, it's practice those dates back centuries for both cultural and religious reasons. Um, it's very doable. Um, you know, I was listening to our minister uh, talk the other day about, um, I think it was Isaiah that was fasting. You know, a lot of these prophets did fast. And I was trying to figure out why. And really, when you do fasting, you'll figure out why. You think a lot better. Your brain clears up when you fast. It's amazing how much energy I have and how much better my brain works when I'm not eating. Um, so it's very easy. It's very doable. Uh, most total fasts are between 24 and 72 hours. You know, if you're going to do a week fast, you need followed by a doctor. I have some patients that do this, but you, you got to watch your electrolytes. That's one reason I really love doing a um, half cup of bone broth. I think that really helped me get through it. But um, I really feel great. It was not hard. It rebalanced my gut for sure. There's no doubt in my mind that my gut feels great right now. Um, benefits of fasting. Um, of course, weight loss. That's my number one reason for doing it. Um, but it also promotes blood sugar control by reducing insulin resistance, which is a huge problem with most of my patients. That's why I put them all on low-carb diets. But I also try to get them to do some form of fasting. Some people do intermittent fasting by eating one day. The next day, they don't eat anything. The alternate day fasting, that works pretty good too for some people. Um, if you're a type 2 diabetic and you eat low carbs and do intermittent fasting, you can mostly get off your medications. You can cure type 2 diabetes unless it's really too far and you're very dependent on insulin, uh, which type 2 diabetics should not be dependent on insulin. The ones I see that are are usually pretty overweight. Um, it... It also fights inflammation. You know, inflammation is the root cause of almost every disease out there, probably every disease. So it definitely reduces your inflammatory markers, which we measure every day, you know, in our office through the Cleveland panel, many types of inflammatory markers that we measure. Um, it reduces blood pressure. It reduces your triglycerides. It reduces your cholesterol. It reduces, of course, your A1C, and thereby it reduces coronary artery disease, without a doubt. Um, the number one killer of people worldwide. Fasting also boosts your brain function, um, prevents neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Very good for that. Um, it's, it probably is very, very beneficial to prevent cancer as well. Um, it's found that intermittent fasting is more effective for weight loss or as effective as calorie restriction. A large study found that it reduced um, weight by 8% and body fat mass by 16%, and it promoted muscle growth. Um, Fasting increases your growth hormone levels, which are so important in regeneration and repair. Um, there was a very small study in men that I saw that fasting increased their human growth hormone levels by a whopping five times. Um, that's pretty big. It delays aging and extends longevity, especially that health span, because you're going to feel better. I'm not so much worried about my lifespan as my health span, that period of time when I feel great like doing things. Um, like I said, it may prevent cancer. It may be as efficient as some chemotherapies, and certainly without the side effects. Sometimes it makes chemotherapy work better. Um, um, 
if you fast, I'll give you some tips on this since I'm just now going through it. Stay hydrated. You know, I really haven't felt weak at all. When I feel weak is after I eat junk food or sugar. That's when I feel weak about an hour later. And then you get hungry again. Now, that's why I hate breakfast cereals of any type, even oatmeal in the morning. You don't need to eat breakfast. You need to fast. Um, so I feel really good. Um, I have more energy. I took a bike ride this morning, had no problems with it, slept great, probably hurt less. You know, you can't get my age, 67, and, and not have a little bit of osteoarthritis or degenerative disease. Um, so I feel really good. Um, but I am going to cut this podcast a little bit short because it's 40, hour 40, and I am getting a little bit hungry. So I'm going to eat something very light, ease my way back into it. And of course, I'll do inter continue intermittent fasting. And every once in a while, I'm going to do this 40-hour fast just for health reasons, for cleansing, for detox. Um, and I kind of want to tease you with next week's podcast. Now, I'm predicting that my next week's podcast is going to be the biggest podcast I'll ever put out. Um, because this compound, I'd kind of describe it as the holy grail of anti-aging. It's something I've studied for years and I'm pretty comfortable with it now. So I just tease you with the word rapamycin. I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.